Well, here we are. 25 days later, and this is the finale of the Goosebumps Reviewathon. Let's finish it. Werewolf Skin is a weird book. Like Vampire Breath, this story takes creative license with the mythology surrounding werewolves and that the skins are what the creatures need in order to turn into the classic monsters. Here we follow main character Alexander, an aspiring photographer, and his escapades at his Aunt Martha and Uncle Colin's house in the town of Wolf Creek. Immediately upon arrival, they say they only have two rules. One, stay away from the Marling's house next door. And two, stay out of the surrounding forest at night. As you can imagine, Alex breaks both of these rules pretty quickly. And as punishment, his aunt and uncle literally bar his windows and lock his door to ensure he stays home after sundown. God damn, this shit is that serious? Apparently so, as Alex later finds out that the werewolves he finds lurking around the woods are actually his aunt and uncle. Oh, and there are no Marlings. It was just a cover story since that's where Martha and Colin store their skins. This one wasn't too bad. Like Vampire Breath, it was an interesting take on classic monster mythology in that weird, goosebumps kind of way. I live in your basement. This story is one big mindfuck. Even after reading it, I'm still so, so confused. It seems to be a psychological thriller, but then it ends up in that classic Goosebumps style featuring a ridiculous twist. Let me try to explain. It follows a kid named Marco who has an overprotective mother. One day, Marco decides to play a game of softball without telling his mom, not knowing that this would set off a huge chain of events that, well, ultimately leads to nothing. He gets hit in the head with a bat by a girl named Gwynny and wakes up later on the couch at home. His mother scolds him for playing those dangerous sports, and once she leaves, he gets a call from some kid named Keith. Keith lives in Marco's basement <laughs> and says that Marco will be his caretaker. There are some genuinely spooky moments with Keith, one of those rare occasions when I actually got goosebumps. But the spooky atmosphere is lost when it becomes increasingly apparent Marco is within a dream, within a dream, within a dream. It's like some sort of fucked up inception, centering around Keith and his conviction that Marco be his caretaker. Once Marco resigns himself to Keith's wishes, Keith vomits and that's when Keith wakes up. His mom tells him he shouldn't have played softball with Marco and that just because he's a monster, he can still get hurt. I still have no idea what to make of this. It had some great moments, but the second half was just too mind-boggling that I forgot all about them. Just read it for yourself and see if you can make sense of the madness. If you do, be sure to let me know. So we wrap up the original run of Goosebumps with a fourth Monster Blood book, and it's easily the most ridiculous. Instead of the blood being green, this time around it's blue. I remember reading somewhere that R.L. Stein said he got the idea for the change in color from the veins in your body. Look at the back of your hand. See how the veins are blue? That's because the blood is actually blue while it's still in your body. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense saying it out loud. I couldn't find that blurb anywhere, but I swear I did read it. Anyway, the old crew is back at it. Conan the Barbarian is back to kicking Evan's ass, so he gets all butthurt about it, and that's when Andy says he can get his revenge by using monster blood. Apparently, Andy found a new can in a dumpster back behind some science lab. What the fuck? How does this shit keep popping up? Oh right, I forgot about how Aunt Catherine mass-produced that shit. So this new blood looks a lot like what you see on the cover here, and it takes to water like gremlins take to water, and soon Evan and company are overrun by the creatures. The kids try to corral them in Kermit's bathroom, but they escape out into the neighborhood. Luckily for them, though, the creatures are so evil, so vile, that they begin attacking each other and the problem just sorts itself out. How convenient. Anyway, when the kids get back home, they're greeted by a scientist who says that the creatures they encountered were actually part of a $50 million secret project to develop an underwater fighting force. And nothing says secret like haphazardly tossing a can of a $50 million substance into a public dumpster. Speaking of which, here's my two-word summation of this book. Dumpster fire. So there you have it. 62 books, 62 reviews, 25 days. I still can't believe I actually did it. This was an incredible amount of work, and I'd be lying if I didn't say I was a little bit relieved when I hit upload on this video. But I'm also a little bit sad, like that fateful day at the local mall when I bought book 62 and saw on the back cover something called Goosebumps Series 2000. I realized this is the end of an important chapter for me, again. Goosebumps was life-changing for me when I was a kid. It got me interested in not only reading, but writing as well. One of my first stories that I ever wrote was during this time. It was called Death Pitch, and it was about a baseball pitcher who was cursed with striking the heads off of batters 
with pitches that were thrown at rocket speed. I wish I still had it to show you guys as it was a picture book that I illustrated as well. But believe me, it was awesome. If I were to sum up the original run of Goosebumps in one word, it'd probably be endearing. Sure, the stories could be hit or miss, but for a lot of us growing up in the 90s, it showed us that reading could be fun and not just something you had to do for homework. And the fact that R.L. Stein is still writing them is just testament to how well he knows how to write for young readers. From Slappy to Monster Blood to everything in between, Goosebumps is a series that could be every bit as endearing as Peanuts or Looney Tunes or any other long-running series, reinvented over and over for each new generation. But that's enough of that. Anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying your holiday, and I'll see you all next year.